Today, let's look at three types of axing that you can use, especially on attacking. Today, let's look at three types of axing that you can use, especially on attacking. And the reason I would like to uh, talk about that a little more is because there's a lot of beginner mistake, mistakes happening there when it comes to throwing the axe kick. The axe kick, it's a very classic kick. It's one of my favorite kicks as well. It's a kick that's used a lot in Olympic sparring uh, nowadays too. So let's see the three types of axe kicks we have. Keep in mind for attacking techniques. The first axe kick we're gonna check out is gonna be the classic axe kick, throwing it with the back leg from a guarding stance. It could be open or it could be closed. Right now I'm gonna use a closed stance. It doesn't really matter. This one can land all the time if the distance is right, the timing is right, and the speed is right as, as well. So for example, if we would be here, you would just throw a long, a, a regular classic axe kick, as I said, and you just wanna land right there. Now, the mistakes that I wanted to point out here is do not try to throw this axic short like you throw it on the spot. So for example, if you are here, and let's say even if you have shorter distance from your opponent, you, this should land an axe kick, right? If the opponent doesn't move at all, but normally they would move, they would have some sort of reaction, right? So that's why you cannot do this axe kick short like this, okay? Without turning more and without actually launching yourself forward. So that would be one thing I want to point out. When you throw your X kicks, make sure you are going long, okay? So imagine you got to think that your opponent is going to drop back. If it doesn't drop, drop back, you are still going to land if the X kick is high enough. So for example, Chad is not moving right now, right? So for example, if I'm here, if I throw a really short one, I still don't land, I barely touch his shoulder right here. If I throw a long one and he doesn't back up, or even if he would back up, I would still be able to land. So if I'm here in a guard instance and we start sparring, I wanna throw an axe kick, I would go really long. So when I go really long, obviously I wanna reach a good height that I can drop it from with power, but also my base foot does not stay behind. So I don't let my base foot stay behind and I land something wide like this, that would, wouldn't be good for me, all right? So what you want to do is to drag the base foot with you forward. So if I'm here and I throw it long, I go one, and you see my base foot follows me and I still have a good stance. Let's say if they back up, backed up, they would be right here in front of me or they would try to take angles, that doesn't really matter right now, okay? If they don't move and they stay there, they try to clinch, let's say, which should be a mistake from them on my X kick, you would just land right on top of them, okay? So throwing it with a longer range would help you both ways. You would cover the target most likely either way. If it's short, you are not gonna land your axe kick, especially in a dynamic sport like Olympic sparring. The second mistake I want to talk about when, when throwing the classic axe kick, it's trying to throw, it, to throw it, to launch it with the leg straight from the start. And we talked about this when, uh, in our Kick Like a Pro series when we talk about the axe kick. You don't wanna throw your axe kick like this, with the leg straight. Why? Well, let's say the distance is kinda shorter like this, as I was saying before, and I throw it straight, what's gonna happen? You hit their body, and maybe this happened to you in sparring a lot. You try to throw an axe kick, but you actually hit on your way there, you hit their legs, or you hit their shoulder, or anything like that, and you have no chance to land. Most likely, that's because you did not chamber your kick enough. So when you throw it, you chamber, and then from there you extend, okay? So from here, if I launch myself with momentum, I just fold, and then you release your axe kick. <laughs> Second axe you can use on attacking, or second type of axe you can use on attacking techniques would be with the front leg. And that could be like with a skip step in it, so you pretty much do the skip step and you land right there. Or you can just shuffle into it, let's say you chamber, right? The action happens on the front leg, you start chambering your axe kick and you just keep shuffling, shuffling forward until you land there. Uh, the main thing I would mention here when it comes to this front leg axe kick, it's again, 
you got to cover distance, but because you use a skip step or a shuffle, that's already self-explanatory. That's why you use that skip step and that's why you use the shuffle to cover more space. And it's a must to chamber again. You are never going to be able to pretty much shuffle forward if you don't chamber this type of exit with a skip step. So you are not going to be able to do it like this, right? It's going to be hard or you're not going to be able to do it uh, the same with the leg straight while you shuffle. So you are not going to be able to shuffle the front end. That's very hard. Your leg is very heavy. It's just going to pull you forward. So it's a must on this one, even more than the first classic X kick, to actually chamber your kick, right? So if I skip, chamber, next you release, okay? Or if you shuffle with it, the same. You shuffle with it chambered, and you are going to release it when the range is right. <laughs> The last X kick type of X kick you can throw on an attacking technique, it's a fancier option, and that's the 360 jump X kick that involves a spinning move. Uh, I would advise you to use this one as well because it gives you more points because it's a turning kick to the head, right? It's gonna be, but in the same time, do not expect to land it so easily and all the time, but I think it's a great kick to have in your arsenal of kicks or types of X kick. Uh, so for example, if you are here, again, you can throw it from any type of stance, um, open or closed. Uh, on this one, I don't have to mention that you need to cover a lot of space because, again, it's self-explanatory. If you are using 360 moves, normally you use them when your opponent is running a lot around and you have to chase them, so therefore you start spinning and that gives you momentum to just cover space faster. And besides that, uh, it's fancy and it's also giving you extra points, okay? So from here, you will just start spinning. Let's say I'm gonna have the distance between me and Chad here a little bigger because Chad doesn't move back. So we're gonna be here, you spin, you jump, and then you throw your X kick. Uh, another thing that helps you here is the jump. Let's say you, you, you cannot reach, a, because the jump is gonna help you to reach a higher point of dropping that you drop the axe kick from, which is great. That's what you want on an axe kick. You want to be as high as possible so you are sure that you're gonna cover the target, which is your opponent in this case. So one more time, if you are doing the 360, just make sure you spin and you land in a good range where your opponent is pretty much covered by your kick, okay? So spin and throw right over their bodies. And here we are. Thanks for watching till the end. If you have any types of axes that you can use on attacking, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. W1 out.